Hi, this is Dr. Liza Sahilo, and this is part two of my musical typing tutorial in Max. Um, what we need to do next now is uh, produce the following MIDI CCs, modulation, sustain pedal. I'm also going to use um, the control out object, which is what we're going to use to create these MIDI CCs, to create a, a channel mode message called all notes off. So it's not listed here, but we're going to do that because we definitely do need a panic switch in case any of our notes get stuck while we're playing. We're also going to create pitch bend messages and we're going to create an octave plus and minus switch because the garage band um, musical typing window had that as a feature. So we're going to add that. Actually, we chose these MIDI CCs, these particular MIDI CCs, because the garage band musical typing window has those features. So again, we're, we're trying to make our own computer keyboard as functional as that of GarageBand. And then after we uh, get the functionality of the GarageBand musical typing window, we're going to enhance uh, our app to make it more functional than the GarageBand musical typing window. Um, after we get um, modulation, sustain pedal, pitch bend, octave switch out of the way, I'm going to show you how to route uh, your MIDI data to different channels so that you have the ability to control um, different instruments, or route the information to different software synthesizers. So here we go. All right. We are going to start by creating MIDI control change, uh, MIDI continuous control change messages for that. And I'm going to scrub us over to a part of my patch that has space. I'm going to unlock my patch and bring in a control out object, CTL out. All right. This sends out control, MIDI continuous control change messages. It has three inputs. The first is a controller value. All right. How much of that parameter do you want affecting your sound? The middle inlet is for the MIDI controller number. This is what you tell, uh, this is how you tell Max which uh, MIDI CC you want to use. And the last inlet is reserved to channel number. We are not gonna use that inlet right now, but we are gonna use it by the end of the tutorial because we do, we're, I'm gonna show you how to route uh, your MIDI information to different channels. So again, you can have uh, control, um, uh, you'll have a way to switch between instruments as you play. Okay, okay. So we need we need to tell control out that we want to create modulation and sustain pedal. Modulation is controller number one. So I'm going to bring in a message, type one into it, and feed it into the first. I mean, excuse me, the second inlet of control out. When I lock my patch and click on one, any values that feed into the first inlet of control out um, will be affecting modulation on a sound. All right. And sustain pedal. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure. I think sustain pedal is controller number 64. We're going to find out. Um, if I'm wrong, I will change it. I oops. I think sustain pedal is 64. Okay. Let's bring in a MIDI slider again. All right. Okay, I'm going to click on number one and I'm gonna, right now modulation is all the way down so we shouldn't hear the default piano sound being affected. Let's listen to it. Now let's bring up modulation all the way up to 127 and see what that gives us. Perfect. Actually, I want to see what the value of the slider is, so I'm going to insert a number box. Yay. All right, there we go. That's uh, middle of the road modulation. Cool. Now let's see if 64 is actually um, sustain pedal. Let's bring this all the way down. I'm gonna click on 64. Let's see it. Oh, it's all the way down, so I'm not gonna hear any sustain. Let me bring it all the way up. Yeah, I would write sustain pedal. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Okay, um, before we match these controllers up with um, the controls that 
the triggers that that um, that we've set up with our key and key up, which you know match the triggers that um, the key triggers of uh, GarageBand's musical typing window. I want to add one more thing to this. All right, so if you guys remember from MIDI 101, your first MIDI class uh, that you took, you remember that there are three types of MIDI message. There are, there's channel voice, which are the MIDI messages that have to do with the creation of sound. Um, and then there are channel mode messages, which affect, um, which affect a channel globally. Channel mode messages are sent out like MIDI continuous control change messages. And there's one very important channel mode messages that, uh, message that I want you guys um, to use in your app. It's going to save you a lot of heartache. It's going to prevent a lot of heartache. Um, this um, channel mode message, message is called all notes off. And it's sent out as a MIDI CC um, number 123. So let's create a MIDI all notes off panic switch. And the way that we set it up here, it's going to turn off all the notes on the channel that we're using. And so if you find that as you play and any notes get stuck as you play, you can click on this um, panic switch and it'll turn off all your notes and you're ready to start generating MIDI data again. Now our GarageBand musical typing app didn't dedicate any of the keys on your app uh, for all notes off. So we're going to have to uh, select a key um, that was not used in the app to, uh, for this function. First thing I'm going to do is create the channel mode message all notes off, and that's MIDI CC 123. All right. Uh, we have to, so I can select this, but just by depressing this doesn't mean that you are turning off all your notes. We actually have to send the controller value to zero. So I'm going to bring in another MIDI message, uh, another message, excuse me, type in zero. And I'm going to feed, oops, I didn't mean to lock the patch. I'm going to feed this into my slider. Oops. And I click on it. All right. And I'm going to use a bang or a button to activate both at the same time. And that's and by clicking on this one trigger, it'll activate both messages at the same time. And I will, uh, I have my panic switch there. All we have to do now is decide, okay, what key on our computer keyboard is going to be dedicated to that all notes off switch. And just to prove that it works, let's create a MIDI note on message. Let's reset, reset. Let's make a MIDI note on message that Let's make a MIDI note on message, but not a MIDI note off message. If we click on this 78, we're going to create a MIDI note on message, but not a note off message. If you continue to click on this, you're just piling on MIDI data, that a, a MIDI note on messages, and you're not turning off the notes. Too, too much of that pylon will cause your app to crash. Um, but before I let that happen, I'm going to click on the panic switch here to prevent any funny business. So here we go. And you notice as soon as I pressed on that panic switch, the note went off automatically. There we go. So it works. We got our panic switch. Very important. OK, I'm going to eliminate this so I don't accidentally press that. Just file, save. OK, let's see which triggers we're going to use for, uh, for uh, modulation and for pseudo. The left tab is used for sustain pedal. And it looks like it's both on and off switch. And since there's no sustain control, it's, it's maximized. It's up 100% up and 100% down when you press it. That's easy enough to program, but I forgot to add the sustain trigger in, in, uh, to my key and key up modules. So sustain is left tab. Let's see what trigger corresponds to that. I'm going to lock my patch and we're going to take a look at the number that comes out here of my key object. Okay. I'm pressing the, um, left tab. 
Okay, that's trigger number nine. So nine. So I'm going to add that to my select list. Nine and key up nine. Okay, we got it. Let me save, I'll save, save, save. Okay, but first um, let's take care of modulation and then we'll look at sustain pedal. Okay, let's give ourselves some space. Okay, so our modulation triggers, okay. Okay, in the GarageBand musical typing window, um, keys three through eight on the, on the, not in the number pad, but in the numbers on top of the, the letters area of your keyboard. Those numbers, three through eight, are used to control modulation. Um, three is modulation off, and eight is modulation max, maximize. And so let's create the first mod off and uh, maximum modulation. Okay. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so there are two things that we need to trigger um, in order to do that. First, we gotta tell control out that we're indeed controlling modulation and not something else. And then we need to feed the appropriate value to the slider. Now here, we've selected the MIDI CC and the value at the same time. Um, we could do that. Um, let, in, if we don't run into any, any trouble, uh, we'll keep it simple and we'll just do that. If not, we'll add a delay and we'll first trigger the, na the name of the MIDI CC that we want and then we'll trigger the value. Okay, so key number three, which is mod off is number 51. So let's find it here. All right, 50, 51. Okay, that's modulation. You know what, let's just save ourselves some time and add the delay. Why not? It's not going to hurt. Delay, 50 milliseconds. That's very fast. And and now we're going to trigger a modulation off. So we're going to send our, I guess we could use the same zero. Why not? It's there already. All right. Okay. Mod off. So just to clarify what I did, we went straight from 51, which corresponds to key number three, straight to, um, to modulation. We turned on modulation. Then we, we use the same trigger um, uh, to turn on the um, controller value, except we delayed it so that, so that first we tell Max, okay, this is the... This is the controller that we want, and this is the value that we want to feed it. Um, I think it's safer to work that way. Maybe it's, I mean, it wasn't necessary for our uh, all notes off, but just to, uh, just to have a fail safe here. Okay. All right. Now we're going to you we're going to set up the max um, modulation. That the trigger for that is key number eight. Key number eight is 56. Let's find it here, 52. There it is. And so I'm gonna select modulation again. All right. And I'm going to set myself up with another delay, 50. And after 50 milliseconds of the original bang that's sent out by the select, you'll have a bang feed a value into our slider. And everything in MIDI, well, for the most part, is 0 to 127. So I'm going to type in 127 as our maximum um, modulation value. 
and let's test this first. Let me save. All right. Okay. I pressed key number three. Modulation is off. Let's play some notes. Now I'm going to press uh, number eight. Now, GarageBand Musical Typing Window uses uh, keys 5, 6, and 7 to give us middle-of-the-road modulation. So um, the way they have it set up, as you move towards 8, you maximize, and as you move towards 3, you minimize. So let's set ourselves up with um, some intermediate mod wheel values. Okay. So let's see. Let's see what values I like for, let's see what 101 sounds like. Okay, 101 could be our number seven. Uh, this could be our second highest mod value. I'm gonna set our, set things up. Right. Here first. Okay. Number seven is trigger 55. Let's find it. There it is. Trigger 55. And let's make sure that we click on that mod. The reason why we have to always um, trigger mod first is because in the course of playing, we may set a modulation, but then we, we may um, work with another controller for a while and then uh, come back to modulation. And so um, in order to be able to switch between MIDI CCs, you got to make sure that you, you tell control out, okay, this is the one I want to change right now, and, and, uh, and here's the value. Okay, number six is middle of the road modulation. So that looks more or less like middle of the road modulation. Let's see what that sounds like. Let's choose. All right, let's choose 61 as our middle of the road modulation. And, um, Key six is trigger 54. There it is. Now let's also do that. Okay. Okay, 56. Let's max out and hear the difference. And six, middle of the road. All right, cool. Now let's do a little less than that. Maybe a little less. That's more of a difference. Okay, let's choose number let's choose twenty-eight. Value twenty-eight. All right. Okay, we want to map that to key number five, which is 53. There it is, 53. And let's take this to 50. Okay, there we go. And now let's save, save. And now let's have the second to last control before we turn off modulation completely with key three. Okay, so, so this is mod off. Let's have a little bit of modulation. Maybe a little more.
on this instrument it may not be very prominent but let's let's select 10 as the value for not uh for um uh, key four on another instrument it may be you know it may actually make a difference Okay, and number four is 52. It is. Here it is. Okay, we got modulation control. Well, let's see. Let's play with it a little bit. All right. Let me turn it off. Max it out. Let's pick something in between. Perfect. All right. Okay, let's now set up our sustain pedal. And um, this one's going to be way easier to set up because basically we have one button for uh, sustain up and one button, uh, one button controls sustain up and down. Just like on the piano, we have one pedal that's dedicated uh, for, uh, for dampening the strings. And so what's going to happen is when I press the tab key, when I have the tab key pressed, we will have, um, we will hear pedal. And when I unpress, when, when a key up message has been sent, after I lift my finger from the tab key, that will uh, lift the pedal and the value will be zero. So this, this is just 100% and 0% thing and it's, it'll be very easy to set up. Okay, so first, we're going to use sustain pedal. That's our tab key. That's trigger number nine, the last one. And we're going to have both trigger number nines turn on sustain pedal con uh, um, uh, controller number 64. So, oh, wait, wait, wait. One thing you need to know, guys, and I think I mentioned this in the last video, always check your outputs on the select object because the numbers that you want don't line themselves up with the outputs of the select. So I was, I was just about to use the last output because nine is the last number I added to my select object list. And I was just going to send it. No, no, no. The last output on your select object sends out a bang when, when, you, when numbers don't match any of, of the numbers in your list. So we'd be triggering that sustain pedal a lot if... Um, uh, if, if I use that output. All right, uh, that would ruin our patch. So make sure you hover over the outputs to make sure that you are using the right uh, trigger. Okay, all right, this corresponds to nine. And let's see the key. This corresponds to nine. Okay, we're gonna add delays, like we've done with our control change message. Delay, 50. We're gonna need two. All right, this first delay is going to trigger maximum damper pedal value, 127. Damper sustain pedal value. It's gonna feed into our slider and this one is gonna lift our pedal, zero. And all right, Lock that was easy, that's it. Let's lock our patch. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. Okay, no tab key. Tab key depressed. Ah, playing notes. I got it. And we lifted the pedal. Cool. Let's do it again. And you could either let it ring out. At least with the piano sound, it will uh, ring out. With another sound, you're actually going to have to lift the pedal to stop the sound completely because it'll just... All right. 
right? But the sustain is removed as soon as I lift my hand from the tab key. Cool. All right. Very nice. Okay, before we create our uh, work with our octave plus and minus switch, um, let's find a key that we can dedicate to all nodes off. All right. Something. Let's see. Let's see. What would be a good thing for all nodes off? You know, we use one and two up on our on the numbers above our um, letters on our keyboard for pitch bend. All right. Then numbers up to eight, all the way up to eight, are used for modulation. Um, we have CMV control velocity. We have uh, Z and X control octave. That's going to be our octave switch. Oh, here's a common sense one to use. Zero. Zero on our number, on the numbers, not on the number pad, but zero up above our letters is not in use. So let that makes perfect sense. Like turn off all the notes. Zero. <laughs> okay. So um, let's find out <coughs> what number corresponds to key zero. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna press on zero. <coughs> Excuse me. Forty-eight. All right. That's going to be our all notes off panic switch. So let's do that quickly. It's very easy. Let's add this to our key up. I mean, our key object, we don't need it on key up, but if we add anything to the list, I would like for our list to be the same on, on both, in both modules. So I'm just adding it to both, although we don't need it. Um, we don't need it in the key up section. Okay, here's our all notes off trigger. There we go. And I'm gonna press it and I should see the light go on here when I press it. Um, hey, oh no, I am so silly. I actually put in zero in the list when I told you guys it w zero corresponds to trigger 48. All right, sorry about that. Need more coffee guys, need more coffee. All right. Okay. Can you put this match? What? No. Bang. Why is this? Okay, let's edit, undo typing. Edit, undo typing. Okay. I think I erased something accidentally in the first one. I just wanted to replace that zero and turn it into a 48. For some reason, it's adding it on my first, I'm getting an extra output. Weird, weird. It's eliminating, no, edit, undo typing. Maybe I reached the maximum values I could have in my select object list. All right. Well, I haven't saved this yet, so let me just close out of it. Don't save. All right, guys. Um, I had to um, restore my patch to the state that it was before I added the, um, the all notes off switch. Apparently, this, these select objects don't want any more numbers. In, in the list. So I'm gonna set up a new select object, uh, one that'll say select 48, so that we can use key zero um, to turn off, to trigger um, all nodes off, this panic switch we have here. So let's do that. All right, select 48. 
I'll set it up with key up. We don't need it on key up, but in case we need to make more um, key up messages, I want the two uh, no on and no off modules uh, to to have the same to be able to to trigger uh, the same values. So copy, paste. All right, and so that and that not a big deal and now this actually let me bring it over here so it's easier to connect this will trigger our all notes off all right let's have this available here in case we need to add to the list for more triggers and i'm going to press the zero key and in doing that we should see this bang light up okay we got a um a kill switch for uh, midi notes so again if in the course of playing, improvising, shredding on your computer keyboard, you get sticky notes. You can use the zero key, which is trigger number 48, to uh, kill all of the notes on the channel that you're playing on. Awesome. OK, the next thing we're going to do is create pitch bend messages. We need another object for pitch bend because pitch bends are not control change messages. They are their own type of MIDI messages. In fact, pitch bends are um, messages with higher resolution than other types of MIDI messages um, because what you're doing with pitch bend is grabbing notes between notes. Okay. And so you need a higher resolution uh, to do that. Okay, let's see. Our pitch bend. Okay, so our pitch bend module is going to be very similar to our velocity plus and minus module. So the work is basically done for us. We don't have to recreate this. We could just simply copy and paste our velocity plus and minus module. Um, but instead of feeding into uh, this slider, we're going to have it feed into a, pit, uh, a slider that controls our pitch bend. All right. Now, First of all, let me show you the object that creates pitch bends in Max. It's called Bend Out. Now, the thing about Bend Out, you don't have to worry about the special resolution of, um, of the MIDI pitch bend messages. Max just allows you to use a regular resolution MIDI slider to talk to, um, to control your pitch bend. If you ever needed, however, to use uh, 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 for example, if you if you ever needed the full resolution of a pitch bend in Max, there are other objects that help you access that, such as MIDI format. All right. Okay, so I'm going to set myself up with bend out, and let's hear this work for a second. Um, I'm going to play, play a note, and you're going to hear a pitch bend on it. object. Uh, we set up ourselves uh, for a slider and um, what I want to do is be able to play it out and then press the plus to have uh, to trigger a scale up this slider and the minus to scale down on the slider and in working both the plus and minus I can kind of uh, get a, a, a vibrato going if I wanted to. Okay so I think what would work better for pitch bend are our line objects. Line objects create ramps. So let's give this line object and let's give it a number box so we could see the ramp and we're going to feed that into our bend out. Let's give it a ramp up message. So we want to go from zero comma to 127 let's say um let's say in 100 milliseconds let's see what that sounds like let's see what that sounds like okay that's a big slide mm -hmm. i don't think i want a pitch bend that'll take me up a major third um let's make it smaller um First of all, let's bring us back to our original pitch. How about 
80. Let's see how far that takes us. I don't want a minor third either. <laughs> I'm thinking of how pitch bend is used creatively um, with MIDI controllers. I mean, most people just want a maybe a half step, maybe a whole step tremolo. Um, let's do 50. Let's see. Major second? All right. Let's, I mean, if we don't like it, you can change. You can change it. Um, and let's create our pitch bend down. So we go from 50 to zero in another 100 milliseconds. All right. Okay, if you don't like the, the whole step value, you can change it. Okay, okay, so cool. This will be easy. So I was thinking, I was making things too complicated. I, I, I only need to send uh, a patch from my uh, pitch bend plus triggers to this uh, line message and the pitch bend minus uh, trigger to this. So the module was way easier than what I, how I was thinking of doing it. Okay, so uh, pitch bend minus is 49. Trigger 49. Actually, we don't need the key up for this. We just need the key. Okay. Let's do something. Let's bring these messages closer to our select box so we don't have to drag across the patch. All right, so 49 is one, key number one, which is used for um, pitch bend minus. There's 49. Let's find it here. There's 49. So that's our pitch bend minus. Our pitch bend plus is 50. There it is, our pitch bend plus. Okay, let's move those close to our pitch bend again. All right, let's lock our patch. Let's save our work. All right, let's play. Do something though. Um, let's let's add a bit more functionality to our pitch bend. Right now, it's it's bending up and down a whole step. Um, let's turn that. What if we gave the performer um, the choice as to whether they wanted to bend up or down a whole step or half step? And so we might be able to do that by adding a dollar sign one into our message here so that we can invite a variable in. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see. Let's see if this works. Oh, wait, I put the dollar sign one in the wrong place in this message. Okay, what if we fed, let's find out what a half step bend would be. Oh, I don't have a number box attached to that, so we can't see what the value is. All right. Twenty 
23, more or less. You could make it smaller than a half step, but we'll do that. 23, let's see if this works. And then we'll have our original, what was it, 50? All right, let's go back to 50. Okay. Okay, we can switch to 50. And we can, okay, we're just, okay, now we have the choice between having a A, a half step kind of pitch bend or a pitch or a whole step kind of pitch bend. So what can, what control, um, again, now we're already going beyond what garage band is, is allowing us to have. So, um, we need, we need to, uh, a new trigger to, to select our pitch bend values. So um, actually, we can have, oh, right next to our pitch bend controls are one and two on, on the numbers on top of the letters, not in the number pad, but on uh, the numbers on top of the letters on our computer keyboard. Next to one and two is a tilde, 96. Let's use that to um, select the type of pitch bend that we want. Um, Okay, so, but let's do something. Um, let's give this a default. And I think by default, a, a half step pitch bend is more useful, is usually more useful. Um, so I'm going to, what's the value here? I'm gonna send a load bang. I'm gonna send a patch cable from this load bang to the 23 the 23s in our pitch bend. Uh, there, there's one. And let's activate two. Okay, so half step, more or less a half step is going to be our regular, our default pitch bend. So upon the loading of the patch, you'll have, you already have a working pitch bend and it'll be the most useful one, the half, more or less half step pitch bend that we've created here. But, with uh, with this trigger 96, we're going to give ourselves control over what type of pitch bend we want. 96. Okay. And I'll just add it also to our key up select in case we need to. Okay. So we could say that when we press the tilde key once, will will take us to our whole step pitch bend. When we press it again, it'll take us to the default. We could do this with a counter. Counter one and two. All right, so it's gonna count the bangs coming from the tilde key on our keyboard. And just so that you could see, um, no, wrong thing here. I'm pressing the tilde key on my keyboard. One, two, one, two, one, two. And then we can attach that to a select. Select one, select two from our count. And when it selects one, it could bang our, um, our whole step uh, tr um, pitch bend. And then when we, when we press the tilde key again, it will trigger our default half step pitch bend. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this module over to where our pitch bend is. Okay, okay, so one. And then two will take us back to the default. All right, let's lock our patch. Let me save what I have so far. And let's, let's see. I'm going to leave the default. Um, actually, let me 
let me select the 50. And now I click on the tilde. It's interesting if you if if you want like a, a goosing type type of um, tremolo or pitch bend, if you just press the uh, minus pitch bend, you can create really fast pitch bends to create kind of like a vibrato thing. But if you want something like a slide, you have the plus one ready for you there. Cool. All right. Hello again. And I devised a way to create a uh, octave plus and minus switch off screen. And I'm going to show you the module that I built so that you can build it uh, yourself. And we're going to hook it up to our note on and note off modules uh, right now. Let me scooch over and show you the plus and minus module. So this module in red is the octave plus and minus module. Let's break it down. So first, I created these adder and subtractor objects. The arguments inside of each object determine how many half steps um, I want to uh, transpose up or transpose down. Now, since we're only dealing with octaves, um, you'll notice that the uh, what's inside of the box are multiples of 12. Zero is for default. So after a transposition, you want to be taken back to your original octave. You have a way to, uh, to do that. So uh, plus zero is the default. Plus 12 is octave up. Plus 24 is two octaves up. Plus 48 um, is three octaves up. All right. More or less the range of a piano. All right. Here on the minus side, here we have... Uh, octave down, two octaves down, three octaves down. And again, all together, we more or less have the range of, uh, of a piano, which is seven octaves. Okay, these number boxes here are our outputs. And this is what is going to feed into our um, MIDI note number input in make note, which is input number one. By the way, we do have to copy paste this module for our note off module. So we actually need um, we actually need two of those red modules, one for the key uh, note on module and one for the key up note off module. We're going to set up the note on first, of course. Now, what's feeding into the adder and subtractor boxes are these gate objects. Gate objects help us to route uh, one data stream to different outputs, or I mean, to different inputs. So, um, the first gate, I will be able to route all the numbers from make note through to these separate number boxes, depending on what octave transposition I want. The numbers from make note will feed into this number box here and then the output here will feed into make note here so we're going to have to do a little bit of repatching here not too much same thing with the um, minus octave part of this module all right the numbers from our make note um, i mean from from our MIDI note number messages here will feed into this number box, be routed, the information will be routed to this number box here, and then the output will be routed back to the first input of make note. Now, how do we route the modules? You have to tell gate which output to open, and that's what these messages are for. This first message will open output number one, this one will open up at number two, and so forth. Same thing with this gate object here. Now, how do we get the plus and minus switch? All right, our plus and minus trigger, which is 
Z and X on our computer keyboard, which corresponds to trigger 122 and 120 here, to select the right message here to open the right output here. Well, we are going to use a counter along with the select object to make this happen. All right. So we're selecting between seven different messages here to control uh, the opening of certain outputs on these gates here. All right. And what's going to determine um, which, uh, you know, which bubble we turn on is a counter. All right. Since we're counting through seven octaves, we're going to count from one through seven. All right. Now, when someone presses the plus octave button, this message on the counter, this ca the zero message on the counter, which is attached to, let me make this extra clear here, the second input of counter. And then that way, every time counter receives a bang, it will be counting up. All right, so you will be able to see you will be able to see um, which octave in your list you select through here through this number box. You'll be counting up when you press the plus button. All right. When the minus button is initiated, this one will be triggered, and then when you click on your counter, you will be counting down, which will trigger your down octave uh, messages here. Now we're going to use the same plus and minus triggers to actually count through our octaves. Um, we're going to have the plus and minus, but so that everything is received in sequence so Max doesn't get confused, we're going to click these functions first, and then via these delay objects, we're going to use the same triggers to send uh, delayed, um, delayed bangs to this bang, which will count, which will count uh, scrub through our select object. Okay. All right. So first we're going to set up the no on module. And remember that we also have to set up, uh, copy paste the second module for our no off module. So I'm going to do that now. Copy, edit, paste, and I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to drag it down further so that it doesn't interfere with the first one at all. There we go. Okay, let's hook up our triggers. Let's find octave plus, which is X. And X is trigger 120. Okay. All right, scooch this over. That'll go into that. And then we shall use the same trigger all right to count through our our octaves our octave up switches excuse me all right oh i forgot to mention see this module here i mean this see this message here this is so this is connected to the load bang that we set up at the beginning of the project this is feeding into input number four on counter. What input number four on counter is for is that it will reset the counter to the number you have in that, that you trigger in the message and it'll begin the count from there. So we want to make sure that upon opening of this patch, um, we will be we will be at the default octave. All right. Actually, let me set up the load bang with the, with, with the note off version of that module. And there you have it. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So I think now we're set up for counting up. We got to count down now. Z is to count down. Z is trigger 122. And that's right there. Let's set this up with that trigger, and we're going to use the same output. Okay. There we go. Perfect. All right. Now we we have to 
detach. Um, our MIDI note number messages from make note and feed them into this number box instead. And then the output shall feed into make note. So let's set up our input. I'm going to drag this over just so we make life easier, our repatching easier. All right. So see all of these glorious MIDI numbers. We are going to detach them from make note and feed them here. Okay, here we go. Get our second half. Let's send it back over. Okay. Now we're going to connect the output to, to make note. Now keep in mind, guys, don't play any notes. Don't test this until you did, have done this with the note off module. You got to create those MIDI note off messages or else we're going to have to use that. Um, our um, all notes off emergency trigger that we recently created. Okay. Okay, our note on module is set up. Ooh, we forgot to hook up our minus. Um, but that's okay. This is an easy fix. All right. Actually, we're making things more complicated here. Let's just feed, since this is already being routed with the gates, we're just going to feed all of the outputs into the same number box so we don't have to do what we just did over here in the make note again. And we're also going to feed this into this. And again, it's okay because the routing is done through these messages here. Okay. So we can simplify things in the no off module as well. Let's do that. This is the ultimate output for all of these as well. Okay, let's do, let's save what we have so far. All right, now we got to do note off module. Okay, let's find our plus and minus on the note off side. Let's just drag these over, make life easier. Okay, there's our make note velocity zero. Okay. Okay. So let's do something. Let's see. Okay, our plus octave is trigger 120. Let's find it here in the note off. Okay, all right. 
this is the count up and then the trigger and 122 is minus octave which is our z key count down count down all right let's drag this back over Okay, we're all set up here. Now, we got to set up our MIDI note numbers here. Again, I'm just going to detach these. You just click on the patch cable and press delete. Can I select multiple? No. Now we're going to feed all of these MIDI note numbers into this number box. All right, we're almost done with our mission. Okay, perfect. Okay, now we need to set up the output into make note. I wonder what it's thinking. Okay, there we go. And we can drag these back over. thinking about it, actually, we don't want these, we don't want this plus and minus switch to be controlled by the key up, because then it will trick, it will trigger um, the notes before we can, uh, the note ops before we can actually change the octave here. So no, let's also set these up with with the triggers above. All right, so I'm gonna eliminate these. I'm gonna leave that with the load bang that's already set up with the load bang. Um, we're gonna set these up with our originals. All right. Actually, we don't even need that. The same controls from the top, these very same controls can work with our bottom patch. Being economical here. All right. Then goes there. Our count up and down goes there. That was easy. That was an easy fix. Yeah, we want these to be ready at the same time that the key up ones are ready. Okay. Now the mom moment of truth. Let's test this octave up and down module. All right, right now we should hear the original octave. Lingering notes. Hmm. I hear the original octave and the octave below, but we shouldn't be hearing. Okay, just load bang here. We got the 
key notes. kill switch here. like our note okay both are getting the same mm -hmm. yeah hit a zero key up Hearing the original octave and minus octave, and and I hear that these are working okay. What is math being done here? It can be routed to the same thing. Let's try something. Seven. Okay, let's see if that helps. All right, let's see if that solved the problem. Okay. Let's see, let's take it back. Take us back to the original. We should only hear one. Okay, we only hear one note. seemed like like having two separate gates i mean obviously was unnecessary both gates okay all right let's transpose up okay i'm going to press x to take us to the next octave oh beautiful and i'm going to click x again to take us to the third octave above the original. All right. Um, okay. takes us octave oh because we're going into the minus octave realm okay so if you keep scrubbing up 
beyond the three octaves that we set up. Um, you will go into the base octaves. I wonder if there's a way to prevent that. It might not be necessary, but um, let's take us back to one. When we create the uh, interface for this app, um, we'll let people know that we only have up, uh, up three minus three octave switch. And that gives us the, um, what do you call? The resolution of piano. All right, maybe instead, can this be resolved by two counter objects? Is that necessary? All right, we're going to keep it simple for now. All right, we're back to the original octave. Second octave, third octave. Now let's take us back down with the Z key and then we can take ourselves. Whoa. I don't have anything with that. We shouldn't be transposing that low. Okay, let's go back to one. All right, back to the original octave. Okay, now we press Z to go down. Z to go down again. That should take us back to the original. Now we should be able to go below one. Okay, I see. The counter and the select mechanism is not going to work for us here. I think. Um, Let's take us back to to one. Now, why can't we just go octave down? Oh, I see. Okay, one takes us to select one, original. Two takes us to select two, so our active up switch works fine. Three takes us to three. Now, when we count down, it <laughs> when we count down three, two, one, they're not the same triggers. So, how can we just count one, two, three, four up? And then uh, four, three, two, one down. All right, guys. I'm going to stop share for a moment and I'm going to try to troubleshoot this. And when I figure out how to uh, fix this module, I will be back on screen. And I found the answer, and the answer is very easy. We have a very easy fix here. Take a look at the range in my counter and take a look what's in my select object. All right, so the fix is in both your no on and no off octave switch modules, you have to do the following first. The load bang message, change it from one to zero. So do that now. After you do that, change your counter range from one to seven to negative three to three. Next thing you gotta do is change the list in your select object and uh, change it from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to zero. 
one, two, three, minus uh, negative one, negative two, negative three. Now guys, you can make these changes without detaching any patch cables. So detaching patch cables, that is not necessary. So I'm gonna leave this module up on the screen for a moment so that you can make your fixes and then um, we'll finish up this tutorial uh, by routing all of the MIDI information we're making right now to uh, at least three MIDI channels so that we would have control over at least three separate um, software instruments. All right, again, take a look at this module right here. And again, this module is the same one as above. Create it. And look to the earlier part of the video to, uh, for the routing of the input and output of this module. All right, now let me demo how it works. So I'm gonna set us back to the default octave as if we had freshly opened this patch. I'm gonna press X for octave up. X for octave up. X for octave up. Z for octave down. Z for down. Z for down. Okay, we're back to the original. Now let's go an octave below. Octave below. Last octave. All right, let's press X to bring it up to zero. That brings us to our original octave. Yay! Okay. Okay. The last part of this tutorial is super easy. Let's go to our make notes. We are going to uh, route our MIDI data to different channels uh, to give us later the control to, uh, or the ability to control multiple instruments. All right, let's for now just route things to MIDI channel one, channel two, and channel three. So we're gonna create three messages, one, Three. Yep. Three. All right, we're going to feed these messages. <coughs> Actually, let's label what this is on the side here. These are channels. These are our channels. So we're going to take this message and go into the second. I mean, the, the last output of note out, which corresponds to our MIDI note, uh, our, our MIDI channel. Last output of note out is to assign a MIDI channel. All right. Now, there are other, now note out creates MIDI note on messages. We also need to assign these channels uh, to the other MIDI functions we want to control as well. Uh, so um, let's see what else we have. We've created modulation. We've created a uh, damper pedal. And we have a, a kill switch. Our um, MIDI uh, um, a channel mode message, which is sent as a, as a, a control change, uh, continuous control change message 123. All right. When, so when we're using the same messages so that when channel one is selected, it will, it will set it to all of our MIDI functions in our patch. All right, so everything that is working with control out now has a channel switch on there. We got to do the same thing for bend out. And are we creating any other types of MIDI messages? Okay, octave switches are working with our MIDI note on messages. So those are already automatically routed. Okay, now what we wanna do is select three keys that'll be our channel switches. Three keys that we're currently not using. So, that'll allow us to change between instruments on the fly. 
attached to this. Um, B, N, and M are not in use. So um, let's make use of those triggers to select channel one, channel two, and channel three. Let me make a note of this on my 98 and 110 M is 109. Let's add that to our second select box in our no on and no off modules. 98, 110, 109. We'll just add that here as well. 98, 110, 109. Okay. We're just going to use the no on triggers. Okay, 98 goes to channel 1. Uh, 110 will turn on channel 2, and 109 will route everything to channel 3. Now, right now, all right, by the time, when I open the patch, everything will be routed to channel 1. Um, let's see what happens when I press channel 2. Right now, we don't hear a difference because um, all channels are using the same instrument. But we can change that to make sure that everything works. We're going to create some program change messages here in Max. This is another type of MIDI messages, MIDI message. For that, we're going to need a PGM out object. Uh, that stands for program out. And the second output of program out, I mean, the second input of program out is for a channel. So we're going to select that. And um, the numbers, now program out speaks to the general MIDI synthesizer on our sound card. That means we need to use general MIDI numbers to select our instruments. One is grand piano. Two, I think, is harpsichord or um, another type of piano. I'm just going to randomly choose some instruments. You guys can go online and find uh, the uh, tone. Um, the numbers that correspond to uh, a general MIDI synth sound. All right. Uh, I'm just randomly, I think 60 is muted trumpet. Actually, rather than do that, well, definitely we want channel one to be piano. And so we'll use, let's use the channel one trigger to also trigger grand piano. Let's use the scrubber or our, our MIDI slider to preview other general MIDI sounds from our sound card. All right. So we're on channel one. We got a uh, piano. Um, actually, I think we're going to need, I think we're gonna need a different program out per channel. Let's do that. We're going to disconnect you for a moment. Program out. It's not necessary to do that. We're going to have that sound correspond to arguments in program out assign the MIDI channel. See? Channel. All right. All right, we're going to have a second program out on channel two. PGM out two. PGM out three. Let's decide on what sounds we want for for uh, channel two. Let's make this slider. Put it on screen. All right. Let's change everything to channel two. So I'm going to press N. Everything's being routed to channel two. I like that sound. Let's, whatever that is, be our second sound, the sound 11. And 110, 
that'll trigger our channel two, but it will also trigger the program number. And now let's select another call sound for program change three. We've got to change to channel three. It's still playing channel two. M for channel three. I like tubular, tubular bells. Um, <coughs> let's do a little more searching bell. Ooh. Fret noises. is going to be program three. All right, 109. Okay, now let's go back to channel one by pressing B, and I should still have piano. Nice. Nice. And then last one. To the steel drum type of sound. We should be able to apply um, modulation, sustain pedal, and pitch bend to all of those sounds because when we change the channel by pressing N, um, that changed the channel on all the other MIDI messages in our patch. So let's do, let's see, pitch bend corresponds to keys one and two. All right. There it is. the whole step. Let's have the pad sound. Well, the pad sound we would be able to hear. So I'm changing the channel three. Awesome. There's our pitch bend on the pad. How about, um, Let's move back our steel drum sound to test the, um, whatchamacallit, oh, the um, sustain. Let me find where that, oh, okay, that's the tab key. Hey, did we route the sustain? We did route the channel, all the channels to the, hey, let's make sure. Yeah, everything is being routed to control that. We should hear that uh, sustain pedal. Hmm. Let's see, maybe that sound doesn't respond to sustain. Let's go back to B. with piano, so I guess that steel drum sound doesn't respond to a uh, sustain pedal. Let's go back to it uh, and confirm that. Yeah, it doesn't respond to it. How about the pad? Hey, the pad responds to it, so it's interesting how the pad responds to the sustain pedal, but not, um, not that steel drum sound. Okay, how about modulation? All right. So modulation. Um, the controls for that. I don't have a memory, so I'm looking at a list that I have in front of me. Um, mod wheel. That, those are controlled by uh, our keys three through eight. So let's maximize this. Oh, maximize that. Give it a little less modulation. A little less. A little less. And a little less. All right, so this pad stops responding to modulation after 
it's really only on or off. Actually, the piano responded a little more to it. So all of these MIDI note on messages affect the different type of sounds differently, which is interesting. Okay. Okay, what else shall we test? Oh, we tested all the MIDI uh, note on. I mean, we tested all the MIDI messages that uh, that we've put into our patch. Now let's test uh, our octave switch with this tone. Right, R plus and octave. Where octave switch? Okay, that's Z and X up octave. Up octave. Down octave. Down octave. Down octave. Nice. Let's bring it back up. All right. And our velocity, C and V, let's um, lower our velocity. It's much gentler. Depending on how complex your synthesizer is, the attack velocity will also have an effect over the tone. These general MIDI sounds are not that advanced, but when you bring in a VST, and we will, to work with our app here, you will hear that attack velocity has an effect over the envelope, the evolution of a sound, especially if it's a really detailed instrument. All right, my friends, we are done for today. Stay tuned for the next tutorial.